In my last video on Svelte's reactivity, you may have noticed I used the on directive to listen for a click event. This may have felt a little foreign to you as every framework has its own way of controlling an element's behavior. So in this video, we'll go over a couple different element directives and events we have at our disposal with Svelte and how to use them. Let's start off with the on directive, which you'll find yourself using a lot. The on directive is used to listen to DOM events. To use it, you simply say on followed by a colon and the event name. So I've added a button with a function called handle click. We want to call this handle click method anytime the button is clicked. We can listen for this click event using on colon click and passing our handle click method within single curly braces like this. Now back in the browser, we can click our button and we will see our handle click function is getting called and we see our alert. Now, what if we want to pass a string into our method to be logged? For example, let's pass our string in as a parameter and log that parameter instead. If we check back in the browser, we see our alert shows right away, even though we didn't click the button yet. This is because we're automatically invoking our method using these parentheses. So what we should do instead is create an inline function that we're not invoking, so it will not run until we click the button. Then within this function, we can invoke handle click. Now, if we test this out again, we do not see our alert until we click the button. Handlers can also be declared inline. So instead of calling our handle click function, we can directly call alert like this. It's also worth mentioning that directive values can be quoted for the sake of syntax highlighters. So if you'd like, you can do this. And if we test it out in the browser, we see we have identical functionality. We can even add one or more modifiers to DOM events using the vertical line character by simply placing this before each modifier name. So for instance, let's add a green div and place a red div within it. Now to our outer green div, I'm going to call our handle click function, which will alert when it's clicked. Notice that we see the alert when the green div is clicked, but also when the red child div is clicked. We can use the self modifier to only alert when the green div itself is clicked, but not any of its children. So to our outer div where we listen for the click event, we can add the vertical line character followed by the self modifier like this. Now we see that clicking the red child div does not alert, only clicking the green parent div itself will. And if we wanted to chain multiple modifiers together, we would just add another vertical line character followed by the next modifier name like this. So now we will only alert if we click the green parent div, but it will only alert the first time we click it. If we check out the Svelte documentation under element directives, you can view a list of available modifiers and what they do. Now I also want to make sure I point out that the on directive can be used with any DOM events, not just click events. So let's remove our event modifiers and change this on directive to say on mouse move instead of on click. Let's continue to call our handle click function and the on directive provides you with the event object as an argument of your handler. So let's pass in event and instead of alerting, let's log it. Now in our browser, we can test this out and we see every time we move our mouse within the green div, we're logging the mouse event in the console. So that about sums up the on directive. Next, let's move on to the bind directive, which you will also find yourself using a lot of. So typically data flows downstream from parent to child, but oftentimes we need to send data the opposite way from child to parent. For example, here I've added an input and I'm using the on directive to listen for the key up event so that we can call our set search value method anytime our input's value changes. This function just sets the value of our searched value variable to the value entered in the input. So if we test this in the browser, we see that as we type in our input, the search value is being updated. While this does achieve our goal, Svelte provides us with a much simpler way of doing this using the bind directive. We use this directive by saying bind followed by a colon and then the property we want to bind. So let's update this example to use it. We can delete our set search value function and we no longer need to listen for the key up event. Now we can replace the input's value with bind colon value and set it equal to our searched value like this. The value of our input is now bound with search value. So anytime our input changes, search value will as well and vice versa. In our browser, we see search values updating every time we type in our input. We could also, for instance, bind a value to whether or not a checkbox is checked. To do that, we would simply add a checkbox with checked as our bound property like this. 
So here I've once again created a new variable, checked, and this value will start off as false. Now if we add another input, this time with type checkbox, we can bind the checked value of this input with our variable checked by saying bind colon checked and then passing checked into our single curly braces. Now our value checked is bound to whether or not our checkbox is checked. Now in cases like this where a property name matches the variable name, we can use a shorthand. So instead of writing it how we currently have it, we can instead simply say bind colon checked. Now in the browser we see this still works the same, but it's less code that we have to write. In this video, I just scratched the surface of element directives. In future videos, I will dive a bit deeper into both the on and bind directives when it comes to creating custom events and binding data between components. Now, the other element directives are not quite as common, so I won't be covering them in this video, but they're all listed in the Svelte documentation under element directives if you'd like to check them out yourself. So now that we understand how to handle our DOM events and bind values, in the next video, let's learn about conditionals and loops. I'll see you there.